Well, today at this Easter time, we are looking at this very famous section in John's Gospel, so John 19, and I called this sermon, It Is Finished. Obviously, focusing in on Jesus' key words here, that he cried out on the cross, finishing uh, the work that he came to do. As always, I do encourage you to uh, read through this passage a few times and familiarize yourself with the text. Spend some time praying, asking God to help you to understand this familiar story, but that uh, a story that shows us incredible things about the plan that God had with his son Jesus and with the Holy Spirit from before time began to finish the work of salvation. If you are new to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe and to like and share this video. Perhaps share it with a friend who you think this would be helpful to. And as always, I'm just going to highlight a few of the things that I've seen in this text that uh, have stood out. And I think one of the first things that really stood out as I read this was this phrase that the scripture might be fulfilled. We see it so that scripture might be fulfilled. Let's see it again so that the scripture would be fulfilled and as another scripture says. And that's something that's massive in this section, that we see Jesus fulfilling ancient scriptures uh, throughout this section. And Jesus really is the key character in this story. So, so the scripture would be fulfilled, we see that Jesus, who John has told us all the way through this gospel, he's been proving to us, giving us evidence that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. This is where Jesus got to, to finish the work that he came to complete. He said, it is finished. And later, knowing that everything had now been finished. And so that the scripture would be fulfilled. We see Jesus finishing the work that he came to do, the work of salvation that the whole of the Old Testament have been pointing towards. The whole of John's gospel has been building towards this passage. Uh, in John 20, verse 30 and 31, we are told that Jesus did many other signs, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you may have life in his name. And in this section, John is recording the death of Jesus, and he wants us to believe. This, this sign above Jesus is pointing to who Jesus is, but it's a part of the bigger sign that John is recording here, the, the greatest event that Jesus did in his life was at this point. He had done incredible things up until this point, but this was Jesus finishing his work. And John is giving us testimony about what he saw, and he wants us to believe, so that you also might believe. And this is the most important evidence that is uh, worth knowing and believing about in the history of the world. And it is evidence about Jesus and what happened to him on a cross. It's all about his crucifixion, which for people living in John's day would have been a horrific thing to consider, that the king who was promised from all scripture would come and face death on a cross. It was a horrific, excruciating way to be killed. And yet this was the plan in fulfillment of scripture that God the Father had with God the Son and God the Holy Spirit from before the world was made. Now another character that we see in this section is the Jews. The Jews have been shown in John's Gospel to be um, against Jesus. From early on we're told that they wanted to kill him. And so they remain a key character in the story right at the end here 
Uh, another character in this specific story is um, Jesus' mother. We've got this little interchange, which is a really personal interchange between Jesus and his mother Mary and the disciple he loved. Now, this disciple who he loved, we know that it was John, the writer of this gospel. And so John would have remembered this little interchange vividly. And that's why he adds it in. And here we see Jesus right at the point of his death, still caring deeply for, for his mother. Another key character or characters in this story are the soldiers who are doing this dreadful work of killing the Lord Jesus. And what we're going to see in a moment is that although they perform this gruesome act, it wasn't actually them who were in control. All of this was foretold in Scripture. This was part of God's plan. And this is where the plan was fully and finally finished. Now, although there are a number of direct quotations from uh, Scripture in this section, there are a whole lot of allusions to other parts of Scripture. Um, some commentators have seen this Jesus carrying his own cross as an allusion back to Genesis 22, where Isaac carried the wood uh, for his own sacrifice. In that case, Isaac, Abraham's son, was spared and a ram was killed. In this case, Jesus, the Son of God, wasn't spared. And then when we are told that he was crucified and two others with him, um, there's a number of references, but most specifically Isaiah 53 verse 12. Now something very important with these types of quotes is although Isaiah 53 verse 12 tells us that he was numbered among the transgressors, the whole section, uh, John wants us to, to remember more than just that verse. And if you go and read Isaiah 53, we will hear that he was pierced for our transgressions. Um, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. So John wants us to think about the whole of Isaiah 53, not just that, um, that one verse. And in the same way, there are allusions here to um, Psalm 22, verse 16, which says, Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircle me. Um, so Jesus surrounded by criminals is a fulfillment. But Jesus is, or John wants us to remember more than just Psalm 22 verse 16. Actually, there's a whole lot of references to uh, Psalm 22. You can uh, look at Psalm 22 verse 15. Um, it, Psalm 22 is directly quoted here. That's from verse 18. They divided my clothes among them. But Psalm 22, we know, starts with those words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then Psalm 22 ends with the words, For he has done it. That's in Psalm 22, verse 31. And that phrase, for he has done it, is very similar to uh, this phrase, it is finished. So John wants us to see that Jesus is fulfilling that ancient psalm. Um, there are allusions also to Psalm 22 verse 14, where we are told that I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. And then they didn't break his legs. Psalm 22, verse 17. My bones are on display. But now this one, they did not break my legs, is, as we see here, not one of his bones will be broken, is a quote from Psalm 34, verse 20. But it's also an illusion to Exodus 12, verse 46, or Numbers. 9 verse 12 with the Passover lamb 
we're told that not one of the Passover lamb's bones should be broken. And here Jesus, the perfect and the final Passover lamb, his bones weren't broken either. And then we are given a quote here from Zechariah 12 verse 10. And again, don't just read verse 10. Read the verses that follow and specifically get all the way up to chapter 13, verse 1. Zechariah 13, verse 1 is an incredible verse. It says, On that day a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. Where is this fountain? His side was pierced, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. It is that fountain that has brought cleansing from sin and impurity. So John is magnificently showing how all of Scripture is culminating together to be fulfilled in this finished work of Jesus. Now, although we've got this word fulfilled, fulfilled, fulfilled three times in our English text, it's only that fulfilled and that fulfilled in verse 24 and 36 are the same Greek word. This, which is a more common word, this word in verse 28 is less common um, and it is the word teleote. Now, this is a word that John as used in chapter 4, verse 34, in chapter 5, verse 36, in chapter 17, verse 4, where Jesus said that he has come to finish work. And he, he, he says in chapter 17, I know that I've now accomplished, because Jesus was about to head to the cross. He's finished the work. And more than just that the scripture would be fulfilled, this word is fully accomplished or perfected. This was the perfect uh, finale. This is what God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit had planned from before the creation of the world. And here it was all coming together perfectly. So although from a human perspective, Jesus dying on the cross was a horrific thing, and what the, disciples, what the soldiers were doing at the foot of the cross was horrific, and Jesus dead and his body being pierced and blood and water flowing from his side. All of these images are horrific, but they were the perfect ending to this plan of salvation that God had planned from before the world began. What is it that is finished? It is the fact that sin has been dealt with by Jesus once and for all. Jesus was forsaken by God on the cross so that those who believe in him might never be forsaken. Jesus' blood was shed to cleanse those who believe from their sin and impurity. This section is working together to magnificently show us how all the scriptures have been perfectly fulfilled by Jesus. And this is the point that all of history was looking ahead to and longing for. So if you ever are reading or speaking to a skeptic, this is a great passage to go to, to give answers. Because John is showing us that beyond the shadow of a doubt, all the evidence is pointing to Jesus as the Son of God and the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, died. And he wants you to believe this. John wants you to believe that Jesus died so that sinners who believe in him might live. This Greek word here is a single word uh, from the Greek, tetelestai. And that word is in the perfect tense, which means that it could be translated, it is finished and always will be. The work that Jesus came to do to deal with sin has been done once and for all, as the writer to the Hebrews tells us. In the Old Testament, the sacrifices needed to be made over and over again. That work is now finished. 
because Jesus has done it. So this passage should cause us to truly rejoice in all Jesus has done for us. And as you dig in further, I pray that you would be rejoicing in who Jesus is and what he's done for us on the cross. Well, God bless as you dig in further.